The situation in Britain since the announcement of the referendum uh, result has really, it, it, it takes your breath away, the speed with which things are changing. This reflects a profound crisis in British society in general, and in the, this is reflected in the main political parties. There's a deep split in the Conservative Party, which they've uh, temporarily managed to, to, to paper over the cracks, with the elimination, there's obviously a clear manoeuvre, of uh, uh, the Brexit candidate, Ledson. Andrea Ledson was, was bumped by the manoeuvre, which excluded the Tory rank and file, of course, of rabid right-wingers, and uh, she, she might have been elected, which the ruling class didn't want that, because that would have meant an immediate split in the Conservative Party, as a matter of fact. The moderates are already talking about a split, which is an important thing which we must bear in mind here. Uh, that was avoided in the immediate future, and uh, uh, May was uh, elected and has put a number of Brexit people uh, in her cabinet, including, amusingly enough, Boris the Barbarian, who's horrified uh, all the foreign uh, governments of the world by appearing suddenly as the foreign minister. I don't know whether the third, the, this could result in the Third World War, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, temporarily they've, they've papered over the cracks, but it will be temporary. Now uh, Mrs. May will have the pleasure of going to, uh, to Brussels and having some quite sharp talks with Merkel and the others, who of course are not going to give her an easy ride, not, not by any, ch not by any uh, chalk. And therefore, of course, the, uh, the, the, the Tory br Brexit crowd will be watching her like hawks, and that the slightest sign of, of a concession, in other words, a surrender, a betrayal, of what they, they would consider to be a betrayal, uh, the, the, the split will be on the order of the, the day again. So therefore, what we have here in perspective is a government of crisis, which probably won't last very long, in my opinion, given the economic crisis, which of course has only just uh, begun, and the prospects of deep cuts, there will be deep cuts, and despite all the talk about one nation, of course, that's nonsense. This is just as much a, a, a government of... Uh, bankers and capitalists in the city of London as it was before. Nothing has changed in that respect, except that it will be a weak government, and at a certain point you can expect that the split in the Tory party, the rift which exists between the extreme right-wing Brexit crowd and the, the Cameron tendency, if you like, will come to the forward again. Now this, of course, poses a, a serious dilemma for the British ruling class. It means that uh, general elections will be called sooner rather than later. I think that's on the cards. And the concern they have in relation to the Labour Party, and that's the interesting part, is not at all what they're saying. Of course, they repeat this lie uh, all the time, this uh, nonsense, that Jeremy Corbyn is unelectable. Well, no such thing. The fear of the ruling class is not at all that Jeremy Corbyn is unelectable, but precisely the contrary. Uh, at, at a certain stage, with, with, with a split Tory party, with a division, with a crisis, and so on, and a deeply unpopular, uh, it will be a hated government, I predict that in advance, that the Labour Party, of course, could win under Jeremy Corbyn. That's the dilemma that they face. And the prospect of a left Labour government is not something that they would uh, like to contemplate, given the present uh, circumstances. Now, you have to see this, uh, in this context, you have to see what's happening in the Labour Party. It really is quite uh, astonishing the conduct of the uh, of the Blairite gang that have hijacked the parliament, really, but that's what they are. A Blairite gang, who, by the way, have no difference whatsoever with the Tory party. That's the problem. They, they try to say, oh, Labour's unpopular and loses elections because of Jeremy Corbyn. Well, no such thing. Labour was losing elections before, precisely in Scotland as a case in point, but not only in Scotland, precisely because people are fed up to the back teeth with this Blairite gang of middle-class interlopers, who are, 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 are no different to the Tories. People will say that. I'm not voting Labour. Why? Not because it's too left-wing, but because there's no difference between... What's the point? That's what people will say. That's what, what, what people say in Scotland. What's the point? They're the same. And by God, they are the same. You see that uh, it, it's been revealed in the press. There's been uh, numerous contacts. This is official. It's not made up. It's in the, in, in the papers. You can read it. 
There have been contacts, regular contacts between the uh, sections of the Tory party who were contemplating a split, the so-called conservative moderates, and the Blairite gang. Why? To, uh, preparing a split. And they are preparing a split in the Labour Party. You can put money on that. This, this split now is unavoidable. The, the rift within the Labour Party is such it's become an abyss. And it's a class question in point of fact. That these people, whereas the great majority of Labour's rank and file, the real Labour Party, if you like, and the great majority of the trade unions want to fight for the interests of working class people, this gang, this privileged, well-heeled, middle-class gang in Parliament of careerists, that's all they are, complete careerists, are only interested in themselves, in their own careers. That's all that motivates. They have no principles, no ideas, and so on. And basically they stand for the same class interests as the people across the... Uh, the floor of the House, of, uh, the, the House of Commons. It was no accident, and it's absolutely unprecedented in, 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 in politics, that David Cameron, the leader of the Conservative Party, demands the resignation of the Labour Party leader. Can you imagine such, such a thing? It's un unheard of. That little incident itself shows quite clearly that there's a united front between the, the Cameron wing of the Tory party and these gangsters in the, uh, in the Labour Party who got nothing in common with Labour, nothing in common with the, with the working class. It's an interesting point, you know, they, they talk about democracy, the democratic sources. Democracy, by God, what they really stand for is the divine right of Labour MPs to decide everything without any democracy, without any accountability, without the participation of the hundreds of thousands of people that have joined the Labour Party. And that are the Labour, they are the real Labour Party, not these... Uh, middle-class careerists in, in Westminster. But the, and yet these people, this tiny minority, this tiny handful of unrepresentative Labour renegades, I can't describe them as anything else, th demand the right to control everything, lock, stock and barrel, without the participation of the rank and file. This is absolutely disgusting, absolutely appalling. You know, Democracy was, was established in Britain through a revolution, you know that. Uh, Oliver Cromwell, who sat here outside the House of, of Parliament, played a role in that when he chopped the king's head off. That settled the, the, the question of the divine right of kings. It used to be the divine right of kings. Now you've got, instead of the divine right of kings, the divine right of Labour MPs. Isn't that great? What's that going to do with democracy, eh? What's that going to do with the principles of the Labour movement and socialism? Nothing whatsoever. And these people will stop at nothing. It makes me uh, laugh. Or rather, it makes me cringe when I hear these creatures talking about, oh, we're subject to harassment and bullying. Well, of course, we're, we're not in favour of harassing or bullying anybody. We're in favour of democracy and accountability. But, you know, what right, what, by what moral right do these ladies and gentlemen complain about harassment and bullying when they've been shamelessly attacking and harassing and bullying in the most scandalous uh, manner? In order to what to destroy Jeremy Corbyn as a human being, as a person, that's what they're up. We're try, trying to force the man to resign by bullying and harassment of the worst kind. In fact, I would say this: their conduct of these nice democratic lady, ladies and gentlemen in Westminster, you know, it compares unfa it compares unfavourably to the conduct of English football hooligans in France. I prefer the football. These are political football hooligans. It's enough to make your blood boil to see how they conduct it. And they got the, the cheek, the brazen cheek, to come and complain. Taken up by the press, of course. Uh, So-called harassment and uh, hooliganism. Well, you know, on the question of throwing bricks through windows, well, I'm not in favour of that. I mean, uh, spare the poor windows. What's the windows going to do with it? You know? uh, don't throw bricks at these people. That's a silly thing to do. The, it plays into that. It's what they want, as a matter of fact, to use it, to the, handing it over to the prostitute press, these gangsters. Don't throw back. That's not the way. The only solution here, as we have argued, as socialist appeal has argued for a long time, there's only one thing that can settle the hash of these people democratically. It's called deselection. Something which they're really terrified of. Now, I note that these so-called Democrats, first of all, they tried to force Jeremy to resign, which I must say, you've got to pay tribute to the man. He's stood his ground. And the, 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 the pressures he's been under have been absolutely horrific. But he refused, refused to resign. The, the next step was a, a, a blatant manoeuvre to keep him off the, uh, 
the ballot paper. When the, when the whole argument was, look, we, we want to stand against Jeremy Corbyn. If you want to stand, we'll stand, for goodness sake. That's your right, that's not a problem. Let's have an election. Yes, but let it be a, a real election. Let it be a clean election. Not one that's rigged from start to finish. And that's what they're trying to do. First of all, they try to keep Jeremy off the arguing that he would have to stand, he would have to get 50 signatures, which of course he wouldn't get because these gangsters would have no intention of giving him. Uh, such anyway, he's, he's this, he happens to be the elected, the democratically elected leader of the party, elected by 60% of the members, not half a dozen careerists in Westminster, but the actual, the real Labour Party elected Jeremy Corbyn. So by, by what right are they going to exclude him? It's monstrous, the whole idea. The NEC, which they were trying to rig, by the way, I think they thought that they had rigged it, but they failed. The, such was the pressure of the rank of file. Particularly on the unions, I believe. I think that maybe unions such as Unison and uh, the GNB were perhaps uh, th the, the leaders maybe were contemplating some kind of a seller, but they couldn't get away with it. They voted by a clear majority that Jeremy must stand on the ballot paper. Now they've got some uh, rich individual, alleged Labour backer, back to challenge it in the courts, and we'll see what happens about that. But not only that, they pulled another stunt on the NEC. While our attention was focused on this question of, of the manoeuvre to keep Jeremy off the, the ballot paper, they waited until half the meeting had left. Jeremy and others had left the meeting. They then passed a, a motion which was not on the ballot paper, not on the, the motion paper. It hadn't been announced. In other words, a blatant anti-democratic uh, stitch-up manoeuvre to introduce all kinds of anti-democratic uh, rules, so-called rules which they've sucked out of their thumb, which they've invented, which are not rules at all. But arbitrary decisions of this gang, also on the NEC, yes, they're controlled by the, the, the right wing of the NEC, which are equally anti-democratic and anti-labor and anti-socialist. In the last week or so, 130,000 people have asked, are, are, are joining the Labour Party. One would think, would one not, that the party would be pleased about this. Are they pleased? They're not pleased. They're horrified. They're horrified against democracy. They don't want democracy. And therefore, a lot of people joining. We can't have this. Look, people are joining the party. And they'll be voting for Corbyn. Of course they will be. They're also trying to recruit people on the right wing, but I don't think they're having much success. There aren't many people enthusiastic about the Angela Eagles and the Owen Smiths of this world. And therefore, if it was a clean democratic election, Jeremy Corbyn would walk it. And that's the problem that they face. So they're trying to rig it blatantly by uh, saying, can you imagine such a thing? 130,000 people trying to exclude it, can't vote. That's democracy for you. You join the Labour Party, yes, but you can't vote. And those that, that, that were already members or supporters of the Labour Party, no, 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 you can't pay three pounds as we, as we democratically decided uh, last year. Under Ed Miliband they decided this, the three pound uh, rule. It wasn't Jeremy Corbyn that decided that. Now you've got to pay 25 quid. Which, of course, is directly aimed against the poor workers, underpaid workers, unemployed people, students, and so on. It's big money as far as that's a lot of money as far as they're concerned. Of course, as far as the uh, well heeled middle class professional types, which is the natural constituency of the uh, Blairite gang, of course, that's 25 quid is neither here nor there. It's rigged, but worse, the thing gets worse. Look, up and down the country, there's been. Uh, and of course, they announced some idiot has thrown a brick through a window. What they don't give uh, publicity to is the huge meetings, which are democratic meetings, which have taken place all over Britain. Like the Brighton and Hove party, where I don't know how many people turned up at that. I mean, six, seven, eight hundred, I don't know. In fact, it was so big that the room, they had, they had to have the meetings in shifts. And they voted overwhelmingly, of course, to, to elect uh, supporters of, 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 of Jeremy Corbyn. What's that called, my friends? I believe it's called democracy. You know, I believe that is democracy. You're right, the right of the members to take control of their own party and to vote in the people that represent them. Isn't that democratic? I think it is. What have they done? These gangsters, these bureaucrats in the NEC and the, the party bureaucracy, they just suspended the, the, the I think it's the biggest district for Labour Party in Britain. The Brighton and uh, Hove Labour Party, which just democratically made these decisions, suspended. 
Yes, and all the, the people that were elected I can't take them. It's, the, the control is handed back to the, 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 the right-wing uh, elements that were there before. I mean, what, what, the, hell, what, the, what the hell is going on? And that they're doing this in general. They passed a rule, which I repeat, there's no rule whatsoever. There's no standing in labor rules. They just invented it for their own purposes, their own anti-democratic purposes. That uh, labor parties are not allowed to meet. That's democracy for you. Labor Party, local Labour parties are not allowed to meet until after the election. Unless it's to discuss the hustings or the nominations, that is. So no question of deselection, nothing, nothing like that. I mean, these are, are the actions, the anti-democratic actions of a clique of careerists who wish to control the Labour Party by undemocratic means and resorting to all kinds of blatant manoeuvres and intrigues and fixing and rigging. I mean, are we going to accept this? Same with the trade unions. They even interfered with the trade unions, saying that those who joined the trade unions were, uh, after a certain date are not allowed to, uh, to vote. Now, you see, I note, uh, you see, I note that there is an enormous anger building up. It's an anger that exists in society. That's the whole point. That's the explanation of the Corbyn phenomenon. Same as the Sanders phenomenon in the USA. Same as Podemos in Spain. There's an angry feeling in society that we've had enough of this. And we want a change. That's the point. These gangsters in Parliament are hell-bent in preventing a change. But a change is precisely what is required if Labour is to be electable, to use the, the current uh, expression. In all the union, in Unite, for example, there was uh, a very angry uh, uh, response. Numerous resolutions for deselection. One of the delegate who was interviewed on television, he came and he said a very true thing. He said, look, the only answer to this is to deselect these, uh, these renegades, he put it, and that's the correct language that should be used. To deselect all of them, all 172 of them should be deselected, and I think that that is a perfectly correct uh, procedure. Now, you see, what's the meaning of this? Well, the meaning is that uh, th this, by the way, is orchestrated and organized. This coup was not spontaneous. Don't tell me that. Don't give me the belly ache. Talk nonsense. It was organized and orchestrated. And by the way, not by people in the Labour Party, but by people in cahoots with the real owners of Britain, the real rulers, who you've never heard of. You don't know their names, neither do I. Or the, 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 the people who run big business, who run Britain, uh, is big business, the bankers, the capitalists, the city of London. All the, the, the political gang in Western can't do their bidding. And it is not in the, in, in the interest of these people that Jeremy Corbyn or the left wing should control the Labour, but therefore they've got to go. You want to prove it? Let me prove it to you. The Financial Times, which is now a kind of internal bulletin of the ruling class, uh, published an, a, an article which says the following. It said many things, but it ends, it ends as follows. What is now at stake is not the political survival of a single individual, that's Jeremy Corbyn, of course, but the fate of one of the two main parties that has dominated British politics for the past century, 100 years, that's right. Whatever happens over the next days, a, cha a challenge should be mounted. This is the ruling class giving instructions to the Parliamentary Labour Party, which they're carrying out. Uh, what a lovely ending this is. Having unsheathed the dagger, <laughs> having unsheathed the dagger, Labour MPs cannot draw back, cannot, must not draw back. These are instructions of the ruling class to the right-wing Blairites, who are their agents inside the Labour Party. You've got, you've got to finish the job. You've got to stick the dagger in. What lovely language. And they complained about bullying and harassment. Well, there you are. Now, what is going to occur? Well, you know, British, British society and it has been plunged into a deep crisis by this referendum vote, which I think was a serious mis miscalculation by Mr. Cameron. They're kicking themselves about this. It's a deep crisis which is reflected in a crisis of the political parties. And the fact is that there's enormous pressure and anger building up now under polarization to the right and to the left in British society and in British politics. That's what this means. This unbridgeable gulf which is opened up. It's, a, it's an unbridge, un, uh, unbridgeable gulf between rich and poor, between privileged and underprivileged, 
between the working class and the capitalist class. That's what it is. Nothing can stop this. Uh, this that's what frightens them. And what they want to do at all costs is to, fe to defend what they call the political centre, which of course was the nice Conservative Party of Mr Cameron and the nice uh, Labour Party of Tony Blair and his uh, successors. But that's finished. There's no way that they can hold the centre. However, of course it is uh, on the cards, as I've said, it is on the cards, that the, the, the Tory party will split at a certain stage. The Labour Party, well look my friends, in practice, there are two Labour parties, that's what this means. Not one, there are two Labour parties. The party of the Blairite uh, gang in Westminster, and the, the millions actually, hundreds of thousands of activists and millions of working class Labour supporters who are fed up with all this business and seek a change. And it's up to the Marxists in the Labour Party, and that's the only place for Marxists to be by the way, is to give a conscious expression to the, this unconscious or semi-conscious striving for a change in society. I believe that the message of Marxism now will ga gain ground, is gaining ground, will gain more ground in the future as the reality of the situation begins to crystallize in the minds not just of thousands and hundreds of thousands but millions of people who want to change society and it's my uh, firm belief that only a Marxist program, a Marxist policy, and a Marxist tendency, if you like, can ensure that such a change actually takes place.